Chapter 26 Psychological and Dietetic Influence During Lactation As the mother may physically and mentally influence the development of the embryo through her blood, so may she influence the infant through her milk. Nursing is a spiritual as well as a physical feeding, therefore, it is very important that every mother nurse her own child. If it is fed on cow's milk, it absorbs the animal qualities of the cow. If it is fed by a nurse, it will absorb her good and evil qualities. A mother who is not able to nurse her child should reform her way of living by eating simple, natural foods and by conservation of genital fluid, she will then be able to nurse it until it is old enough to eat solid food. After the termination of nursing, between two and a half and three years after childbirth, the infant should be weaned and raised exclusively on fruit. Fruit will supply it with all the elements it requires for the formation of a strong, healthy body even as grass supplies the needs of the calf. The infant should never be given cow's milk. Cow's milk is unfit for human consumption for many reasons. Mother's milk forms small, soft curds which are easily broken up and digested, while cow's milk forms large, tough ones which are only adapted to the four-stomach system of the calf. Since the calf's period of infancy is only two months, cow's milk contains more rapidly maturing constituents which cause the child to grow at an abnormally fast rate. Babies fed on cow's milk may appear large and fat, but their tissues are not healthy. Cow's milk contains an excess of indigestible casein and lime, and a too small amount of milk sugar and potassium. The most obvious difference between cow's milk and mother's milk is the fact that one is acid while the other is alkaline. The infant is unable to digest cereal starch in any form. Therefore, Svibok, bread, Crackers and cooked cereals, or their juices, are injurious. Such foods only turn into carbonic dioxide gas and alcohol, and are liable to cause convulsions. Water is not good for infants, for, whether boiled or not, it always contains a certain amount of inorganic matter, which may settle as calcareous deposits. Before weaning, the baby may obtain all the water it requires from its mother's milk, after weaning, from fruit. The child, like the animal, should eat by natural instinct. When hungry, it should go to the food supply, and take the quantity and quality of fruit it requires. It should never be fed by its parent, nor forced to eat anything against its will, which perverts its nutritive instinct and is the main cause of children's diseases. A child raised on fruit will be physically, mentally, and spiritually supernormal. The thoughts and emotions of the mother, previous to and during nursing, through the glandular secretions which they induce, affect the chemical quality of the milk and the development of the child. These secretions, transmitted through the milk, will accelerate in the infant the growth of those organs, ductless glands, and brain centers which have been most active in the mother, thereby reproducing in it the psychological traits she has then exercised. During lactation, the mother should devote her time to the cultivation of the special talents which are to constitute the child's future life work which have been decided upon before conception, and which have been developed during gestation. The education of the child during the nursing period is more important than at any other time in its development, except the prenatal period, for its brain is never as sensitive to nutritional, environmental, and psychological stimuli as it is then. Psychic conditions in the mother exert a powerful influence on the secretions of the mammary glands. Worry, grief. Anger, fear and irritation not only diminish the secretion of milk, but change its character and chemical composition, so that it may become distinctly injurious to the nursing infant. On the other hand, a pleasant and tranquil state of mind, combined with proper diet, will usually produce a copious flow of wholesome milk. Mothers should be especially warned against taking drugs and all kinds of stimulants during the period of lactation for such preparations will impair the quality of the milk and will often prove fatal to the child. In the same way that the mother's habits of thought affect the child's character, so does the food she eats affect the child's physical growth and health, and, in a close manner, its mental characteristics. Especially during this period of nursing should the mother exercise the qualities, decided upon from the beginning, that in their transmitted action will constitute genius. After an intense application of brain power in the direction required, be it that of mechanic, author, editor, teacher, singer, etc., 
The mother immediately following this application should give her child the breast. And precisely so in every department of childbirth. A fat and heavy baby is generally the result of dietetic indiscretions on the part of the mother, the eating of too many cooked and concentrated, acid-forming foods, the extensive use of table salt, which leads to accumulation of water in the tissues and dropsical condition. Nearly all infantile diseases are directly caused by faulty nutrition and lack of hygienic care during pregnancy and the nursing period, and never by s called infectious germs. Of 15 babies who die during the first year, only one is breastfed. Overfeeding with boiled and pasteurized milk, the extensive use of artificial infant foods, lack and fresh air and injurious prenatal influences are the principal causes of large infant mortality. The newborn infant needs no artificial food. It should be put to the breast whenever it shows an inclination. The true mother will delight in the privilege of nursing her child. It is highly important for the mother to be guided by and to protect the infant's inherent nursing instinct. The mother of young animals always has her breasts at their service, to which they go when they are hungry. The human mother should try to approximate this ideal. The only feeding schedule to follow is the infant's natural hunger. This, of course, necessitates the mother's continual attention to the child. Mothers whose minds are diverted by frivolities follow an artificial feeding schedule so that they may come to their babies only at certain times. But this is to the child's lasting detriment for the human body is not a machine which may be fed according to the clock.